We can. I don't know if if I have to wait. <laughs> Whoopsie. Okay. <laughs> now we are live. Ah. Okay. <laughs> No, we're definitely. Yeah, I had to click the the button on YouTube. Oopsie. No. Okay, nine. We'll wait uh, a couple of minutes anyway. Sure. But thank you for making it notice to me, because otherwise we would would suck. <laughs> <Not talking. laughs> yes. oh, <laughs> All night. Okay. Cool background. And here in the screen. In the screen. Oh. It's it's uh your cover photo from uh, two thousand and eighteen. Twenty eighteen. Yeah, I have to change that. <laughs> I couldn't find the, the picture from twenty twenty. Twenty. Because it, it's a, uh, it's an Instagram. Uh, it's only on Instagram. Yes, it's I think. Uh, I think. Maybe, maybe. It's yeah. on Instagram, so. I had to get the 2018 one. Yeah, I should <laughs> replace it at some point. Roberto says hi. Hi Roberto, <laughs> ciao. Hello. I think we have a bit of delay yeah. with, uh, with the chat. Yeah, yeah, we have a bit of delay. It's, it's normal with uh, YouTube live stream. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to reply. Okay, I think we can start, right? Yeah. yeah. I'll have a sip of beer for. <clears throat> As an encouragement. Yeah. <clears throat> so, hi everyone, I'm Alice from our Exit Printing Studio, and welcome to my first live stream. I will stutter a lot, probably, because I'm quite nervous. And maybe I now is a little bit nervous as well. I can see it. Uh, yeah, I'm always nervous. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I am very pleased uh, to have uh, this amazing and incredible painter here with me today. And let's give him a warm welcome to Arnaud Lazaro. <laughs> welcome. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. I'm doing good. And situation isn't the best COVID-wise, but oh, no, hopefully we'll get through somehow so yeah uh, we are here today talking about oh miniature painting duh right and uh, more specifically uh, we, we will talk about uh, Arnaud's approach to miniature, miniature painting and so how he approach uh, his figure and how he paints his figure and also we'll talk about motivation what inspires him, how he keeps his motivation up, and also lack thereof, so lack of motivation. And finally, we're going to answer some of your questions. We're probably going to answer some of your questions uh, while we go through this various topics. So feel free to write in the chat and we will keep up with it. And uh, well, if you have been living under a rock for the last few years, and you don't know who are now Lazaro is. Lazaro uh, is an award-winning professional miniature painter. And uh, is an, is an excellent teacher as well. Is it's it's actually how we met. Uh, we were at Golden Demon, uh, 2018, I think, or 2019, uh -huh. maybe. But what we didn't meet. We didn't meet. Right? I probably saw an, uh, saw you on the stage because you won like silver or gold or a bronze. I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, and I and I got uh, finalist pins. 
<laughs> yeah, and but we, we didn't actually meet. We we just um, we meet uh, on online, and we did mm-hmm. some lessons. And I wanted to do the streaming with you because uh, our lessons uh, were very enriching for me. Um, not just about knowledge, but also the conversation that um, created that exchange of knowledge. Uh, that's why. I, that's what what I want to do tonight, with uh, and sharing all of you, um, how this man can be so inspiring and enriching. Just chatting with him and hopefully hopefully we will be able to do that so without further ado was we'll start out give the word to you so just talk about a little bit uh, about how you approach um, miniature painting uh, how do you choose lights how to look to to work with light because you are very 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 good at doing this light effects and uh, just how you do it. How do you do it? <laughs> Tell us. Well, that, that's the question, right? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I, I think I have uh, two main um, characteristics that I try to follow since I started painting. Uh, the first one is the sketch. Uh, I always sketch almost everything. Uh, there's different degrees in sketch because uh, usually when I know uh, how to do something, uh, something that I did many times, it's a, a not so messy sketch. It's a it's a polished sketch, so I don't have to clean and, and it can be done quicker. But when I don't know what I'm doing. I sketch really rough and really quick, so I ha- I can see more or less what what's gonna be in, in the figure. Uh, I think that's that's the main point, and that's also one of the um, characteristics in the visuals in in how it affects the outcome. That's why my I I don't recognize my style. I always do. I always say that I I don't know what means my style no one does though. but i no sorry? one does you told me exactly. that exactly. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> and um i don't know uh what what makes that but i'm sure that making the sketch um, makes easier to to reach that point or, or not makes easier but it's part of of that point of that end point and the other uh, it was um, the sketch and then the reference. Looking for a reference, it's uh, something that it seems... I, I find it uh, lately, I found people saying that it's like cheating. Like they think that it's cheating or, or it's not. The, the merit, I don't know if the word is, is correct in English, merit. Um, but. Uh, well, if it's not someone know. in the chat. I think um, yes. Yeah? Do, do you understand it as a Italian? Yeah, merito. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is that the meaning? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, as it, it's like it doesn't have all the merit to paint with a reference, and, and I think that's completely off uh, because you cannot freestyle everything and you cannot uh, do uh, everything out of your mind because your mind doesn't have all the answers. So you have to, to search for them uh, in, in another place and you cannot imagine. Imagination is not that vivid. It's, it's very ethereal, ethereal. So even if you have a very concrete idea of what you want to do, it's a not so specific idea because you may think, yeah, I know perfectly what I want to do. But then when you are painting, um, it's not the same. You have to or draw it yourself or look for reference or pre-visualize it in some way in any kind of art, 
in form of art or or other mm, disciplines, uh, people uh, sketch always. It's 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 a no-brainer. Uh, you have to sketch, and in in this in, in miniature painting is the same for me at least. Uh, I need to see what I'm doing because, and that's uh, something that leads to the other um, important point that it's the plan. I always need to have a plan. I want to do something with the miniature. I'm not sitting down and painting just for the sake of painting. I want to do something with that. And and I think uh, without an idea or without a, a path you have to follow, it's way difficult to achieve something meaningful or or that people really, uh, that, you know, that wow effect uh, when you upload something on internet. Uh, if it has that um, extra of the idea, it's way easier than just a beautiful painting or a well-executed uh, blending or whatever, or a non-metallic or etc. If it has something, if it has character, I think it's the the most forgotten and most important part of miniature painting. This this extra this. We can say it's soul, but it's not like soul. It's more uh, a purpose for the miniature. But one might think that uh, there is something um, not quite uh, understandable of that this thing, because one thinks uh, about heart, or like you said, uh, you know, one of our lessons, craftsmanship like something that uh, could be done like with inspiration, you know, just drop some um, paint on a canvas and whilst in, in reality uh, it's actually something that you have to, to think about. I, I remember in one of our lessons you, you, you spoke about how when you when you're painting something for work like a box art or maybe for a client you're doing uh, some stuff in automatic, autopilot. You remember that? Yeah. And then when you're actually doing something new and actually putting and pouring yourself into a piece, and mm -hmm. that's the artistic or really crafty part, pouring yeah. our, ourselves into the piece. So not doing it in autopilot, but putting the effort of putting something of ourself in the piece. I think that that's mm. that's the most important. That, that, that doesn't mean that all the miniature we paint uh, have, have to be like that, you know, I think, at least that's yeah, yeah, yeah. what I think. Yeah, it's it's the difference uh, between the sketch. The, if I do it uh, more accurately from the beginning is because I know what to do or I'm just in autopilot and and I don't need that much experimentation. That, that's normal. Uh, it depends on the project, and no project is is the same. Uh, usually, commission jobs, which are the, the most of them, uh, are or have a less um, artistic um, or less art on them. Are more craftsmanship. And when I can put my myself into the pieces, when I pick a piece by myself on, or paint for a collector that doesn't care about time or or that allows me to choose the figure or the topic. And that's uh, not, not many times a year. That's, <laughs> so, and maybe that's not too good for your... Maybe, for your motivation maybe it's it's sometimes if you if you do this like uh, a job like like you do um sometimes the, the auto the autopilot uh takes its tolls you know and maybe yeah. it, it drives you to a point in which you're kind of burned out yeah autopilot it definitely burns yeah. out yeah you need uh, to pick some figures to to recharge yeah and uh, or or I, I myself, I, and <clears throat> when I feel burned out, of course, not for 
those reasons. Uh, when I feel burned out, uh, I try different uh, art mediums. Like now, I'm really uh, into terrain building. It's it's a form, mm -hmm. and I'm really into that. For for a while, I was really into um, uh, alcohol markers. That was really cool. So uh -huh. uh, drawing, and I picked up drawing, and it's always this different art forms that um, have some effect on your way of painting because if you're drawing if you're drawing you you are understanding how the character is built how and if you're if you're if you're um, coloring you're understanding how the light and volumes work so you're not actually stopping but you just you just change medium for a, for a while yeah. not to get yeah, yeah, worn yeah. out uh, that's that's it and uh, about the the, the sketch um, the sketch style which uh, I like very much and for me and I think maybe uh, for many other uh, intermediate painters like me uh, it is quite dif difficult to grasp uh, be the, the, not the, the sketch in itself but mm -hmm. uh, how do you uh, keep those colors remember we, we talked about that how do you keep those colors in while you sketch, because I I did this uh, paint job on the demon from Carol Rudick, and I was so happy with the sketch that I did. It was so rich of colors and brush strokes also. But then I wasn't able to keep. I wasn't. I wasn't able to uh, to keep in that uh, that color as much as I wanted to. And I don't know, maybe you want to say something about that? Yeah, uh, uh, first, I, in the sketch, I think it's something important to, to realize that you to the sketch. It's not something, obviously you can, but it's not something that you can do or that you should do uh, if someone tells you to do. If, if I go and, and tell my students, you must paint with a sketch. Uh, probably and most likely, and I've seen it many times, uh, people will lose themselves in the sketch because it's not something they need. It's something that I'm telling them to do. Uh, if if you, are, you have a project, you have a figure in, in front of you and you have a project and, and an idea, and you want to put this idea in the figure, but you don't know how it will uh, come out. You you can't know. So you need to sketch this idea to see if it works. And that's the that's the breaking point of the sketch. If you know what we, you will do, or more more or less what will be the outcome, because you are not uh, leaving your comfort zone. I think the sketch, it, it doesn't have that many importance or place because it will make you lose time uh, in cleaning after the, the, you finish the sketch. So for me, it's really important to know the reason you are sketching and why uh, or where this sketch goes. Well, see, if you don't know what this sketch uh, is meant for, then there's no point of it because um, the sketch is basically to see something in advance in, in a rough way. So I've, it, that's because I see, I've seen it many times. Uh, people sketching because um, they hear it in the world, in the miniature world, how people sketch, how professional uh, painters sketch. But if you don't need it, because the idea doesn't require it, maybe it's not the best. And you said about the colors and keeping the colors. Mm, keeping the colors, I don't, I don't see how. I mean, it's a problem if you use a lot of desaturated colors like black or white, or browns, uh, etc. Colors that that are desaturated, but if you keep using colors that that have color, that 
uh, and I don't mean primaries or secondaries. It can be a uh, uh, Sony skin tone, for example, or uh, a skin tone that has not that's not too corrupted. If you use these colors, then you will have an outcome that that still has color. The problem is when we use colors in the middle that that are desaturated. This in in the class uh, we we call them shitty colors because they are you don't know what color they are. They are brownish or bluish or greenish, but they are not colors in in the purest form. So avoiding these colors, I think it, it really helps. Just avoiding them, not not doing anything else especially. Just avoiding colors that are not pretty, you know. Yeah, and, and we also talk about uh, the when you talk about the skin, how uh, actually uh, premix color mm -hmm. can 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 actually be used when we talked about uh, mixing because. Uh, sketch sometime I myself uh, I tried it because I was told to try it you know you, you have to sketch uh, Alfonso talks about a lot about sketching and I saw many sketches and probably at the beginning I, I didn't actually know <laughs> what I was doing like um, maybe it's it's related to something that like I'm sketching, so I feel more artistic. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, but actually you're you're just messing up. You yeah. Know? You're just throwing paint <laughs> randomly. But yeah, I, I I didn't quite understand though or what you said about like when to use the sketch. So because you know from our lessons that I'm quite uh, slow at <laughs> understanding stuff. <laughs> So sometimes I lose you, and uh, and you have to explain it all over again. Uh, no. But maybe I did get it. I don't know. I'm I'm just gonna uh, say it, and you can tell me if it's wrong or not. Uh, but you sketch when you have to, uh, when you want to 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 bring an idea to life. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Mm -hmm. But and when you don't sketch, it's a question. Um, I don't sketch. Sketching, I mean, my process is uh, it has some kind of sketch always because I always put the first layers in a in a quick way and rough. And, but for example, uh, let's say a, a standard example that everyone can relate to. Uh, if I do a, a bust and I paint a normal skin, a Caucasian under a sanitary light. Everything standard. I, I did that many times. So the only reason I have to sketch that is because the because the volumes that this figure has are a volumes that I never met. It's the first time I paint this figure. So that's the only reason I need to be a bit rough. I just uh, need to familiarize myself with the figure. But for example, if that same figure I, I want to paint it with uh, a rebound light from one side and then instead of zenithal light is another side. Uh, I don't know how to do that. So I need to sketch both lights to see how they work and to change things because between them uh, things will be complicated. Uh, one light will make a shadow, the other will make another. So that th this um, these many variables, I need to have them um, studied before I, I put myself into the proper painting. So that's why I need to sketch because I need to see how that works. It's not just in my head, in in the figure as well. You 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 first kind of visualize it in your in your head, then you need to get it roughly on the figure. Mm -hmm. And that's quite a, a one of the uh, of the the question I had, because with uh, ISL, so other sort of lights, that sometimes is is, is um, associated with 
like bright plasma gun or something like that, but it's actually another source of light, which you, you if you if you see portraits or uh, uh, photographs or people, uh, we we all have other source of light because lights if as far as I understand it, lights bounces around, right? Mm -hmm. So if I have the light coming from here, but some light will bounce from that wall and it will hit my like lower yeah, yeah. this part, I don't know what it's called. Yeah. And yeah, so that's another source of light. And I had this doubt, uh, if I have an, another source of light, do I paint it while I'm done? Or do I paint it? Yeah. Simultaneously. Yeah, I, I understand. So that's that's the answer. You 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 sketch it uh, at the beginning, so you you know uh, uh, what you're gonna do with the lights from the beginning. Instead, for example, uh, a beginner like me uh, didn't do that. <laughs> uh, I, I find I found many times people asking me. Um, how do I do that? Because they have an idea, for example, I don't know, uh, an orc with a green skin, or uh, that's too common, uh, maybe with a purple skin, I don't know. And, and the, if you don't know how to do a purple skin, usually you have two ways to know how to do them. One, the lazy one, is asking someone who knows how to do a, 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 a purple skin, and the other one, the, the, the better one, is trying and sketching, and that's that's uh, when you don't know something, sketch it, and that should be the 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 mantra. If you don't know, if you if you want to ask, don't ask and try and sketch it. it it feels simple, and but it is. It really is, and and I did it myself my all my life. Yeah, I think it's it seems it seems easier. Um, oh, Said than done. So, so many to, so, so many people to to just ask, because I think there is a a resistance to say. For example, if you would if you would to say to me, uh, try to sketch. Two different sorts of light. I would be like, yeah, but what? but that's depending on your level. If you have a um, beginner, intermediate level, and you are not used to the over lighting, or maybe uh, you are not used even to a directional light, first try a directional light, and then you will try both. Uh, obviously, steps are meant to fo to be followed and not uh, starting with the most complex uh, stuff yeah, like sure. that. <laughs> you, you have to be able to walk before you run, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we talked about that a lot uh, when we talked about this this topic, because I, I know I wanted to try a uh, double source of light, mm -hmm. and, and I actually didn't uh, uh, try it yet. I will, maybe. One yeah. day. <laughs> it, it was when I can yeah. it, it, <laughs> Sketches can be done for many things. Just only uh, skin color, uh, I don't know, uh, a, a kind of non-metallic, uh, uh, a type of rope or a leather. That, that There's thousands of types of leather. And you probably know one type the, or the texture or the whatever. If you want to learn a new way, then try a sketch. Yeah, and and here we're coming back to the reference reference thing, which I I, I was uh, kind of uh, surprised by your statement about people not liking uh, using reference. And it's not not liking is is uh, not understanding why reference is so important or but not everybody uses every every artist uh, yeah. uses references but as well sketches and yes sketches are... so uh, it, it seems uh, counterintuitive if that's a word that 
someone uh, would say that because uh, some for every artist has references. It's not so much for saying that references are not um, worthy or whatever. Is is more not using them, and and I I've said many times to the to the same people uh, to students use reference and and then obviously they use one but in the next figure they don't and I have to say use a reference if you don't know use a reference it's something that that it doesn't come out naturally in in it's like something that people I for what I've seen that it has to it's like an effort almost to look for a reference and 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 a reference can be made for for everything for an eye for for how to interpret uh, an, a nose what or, or a material anything or a, I don't know anything so it's not just the start like you don't need to pick a reference and stick to it it's a reference for everything that you don't know yeah sure sure and I think I had uh, this resistance uh, myself, but when I actually started using references, I actually started also to see reality in a different way. Uh, so seeing uh, people as a reference. I don't know uh, if, if you, if yeah, you yeah. understand what I mean. Like uh, looking at um, uh, someone in the face and noticing the light, like uh, there is uh, this particular light on the female face that's uh, right be behind the, uh, underneath the, not eyelid, but the eye. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's very, it's very present and I never noticed it before. When I started looking at references, I noticed it and I, I couldn't went, I, I couldn't went back, you know, I, I saw it and really looking at a reference it it makes you uh see the world in a different way and and then the mm -hmm. world becomes your reference because you you actually train your eye to to see reality uh through a lens uh a lens that uh you can use and and put when you when you paint miniatures so that that's a good thing i think uh, so reference is good, but, but I, I also understand the resistance to use reference because I think for, for beginners um, it might be a little bit uh, intimidating. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, but uh, for, for beginners, uh, what, what a beginner needs to do is to learn how to paint or, or it, that's maybe too wide. Uh, they need to learn how to use the brush and use proper technique. Uh, when you learn the basics, then you can start experimenting and doing a certain type of, of jobs, more more artistic. Obviously, in the beginning, you, you don't need a, a reference because you don't know how to do a blending, for example. Yeah, sure. So first, focus on the on the basics. Step by step, walking before running, yeah. right? And. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about a little bit uh, about NMM, MNM. Yeah, before before that, if just if people uh, wants to make a, a question because I, I we didn't say mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Uh, if people have a question about sketching about the topic we are we are talking, uh, please uh, we are reading the sketch the, the chat. Yes. The chat. Yeah. <laughs> so so if you have a question or the sketch or anything, uh, please um, write it down and we will yes, check it. Thank you, Anel. I'm kind of new at this. I don't even know if I uh, should uh, like say hi to the people who wrote in the chat. But anyway, hi guys. Thank you for being here. <laughs> kind of new at this, so sorry for that. <laughs> um, you can see in the chat uh, is someone's writing. Come on, guys. You must have questions. Yes, I. Yeah, a lot of people that I know. 
uh, para quitas es my, my business partner in Milan. <laughs> Well, we, we'll stay on the topic anyway, because we, we're going to talk about uh, your approach to non-metallic metal. And, you know, you, you, you sketch it. So it's pretty much the, the, the same topic. So we can start yeah. uh, like discussing that and uh, remind people that if, if they want to ask questions, they are really very uh, welcome to. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's let's talk about the metallic metal and the sketch in uh, NMM, and maybe the difference between um, that type of approach and maybe another uh, another kind of approach. Like I I did a workshop with uh, Pizarski, who is uh, one of my other favorite artists, but is uh, is very step by step. So. Step one, step two, step three. Um, he uses a lot. He has a lot of steps. He uses uh, like uh, washes also from GW. He, he has a mm -hmm. kind of weird, not weird, but all all his own way to paint. Uh, but it's very step mm -hmm. by step. And for me, um, it was interesting, but I couldn't. I wasn't. I wasn't able to. To make it my own, you know. Um, I don't know. So I, I want to discuss the, the difference between sketching and doing a step by step approach to non metallic metal. Mm. Uh, I think uh, step by step once was sketch. Because, um, for example, in, in, in that particular case, he has a very recognizable uh, style of non-metallic, and and it's very polished. Not not the, not the material, but the the process and and the uh, thing is very polished. And that means that he did it many times. And when you do something many times, usually you you do it the same way and you keep perfecting it. And that leads to a step by step, because you are doing it often. Uh, I obviously I have a, a default non-metallic that I do when I am in autopilot. Uh, but when I try to do a, a metal, a non-metallic, a different non-metallic, I sketch because I don't know how to do it, and I need to look a reference and then translate that in the figure. And I need the sketch, the sketch for that to, to translate it because I don't know how to do it. And I think it's an but but for example, if in the in, we we talked in a in a online coach about the metal of the uh, how is it called the lady with the armor, uh, uh, John of Yeah. If I did that non-metallic in all my pieces, I would keep perfecting it, and and it will be, and it will uh, be even better with, with time, and the process will be clearer because uh, when I do it one time, I'm messy, I I go back and forth, I don't know what I'm doing until I I um, find something that that suits me, that suits what I want, but. The second time, you already know what you want, and you already know uh, how you came to that point in the last figure. So it starts becoming uh, a step by step because you follow a um, more direct process. If you it a third time, you already know what you need to do to achieve that. So it becomes a step by step. So. I you, you, you start with a sketch uh, to getting to know the figure, but then it, it automatically it automatically uh, becomes like a step by step because it, this does make sense might make sense. Not in the same figure. Not in the same you, figure. Yeah, because if, if you do the same no metallic in different mm, figures, the next projects, you will keep refining this this process 
so it will became a step by step logically yes yes it, it makes sense like uh uh, it's, it's it's a reasonable way of thinking. I I didn't think about that. Um, I I didn't think about that because I I I, I didn't know that um, what we said before about sketching. So getting to another figure, I went I went mm -hmm. on autopilot, <laughs> like with my questions. You know, sometimes that happens. And yeah, it makes sense. So you you sketch to know the figure. But then, if you if you do that process many times, it becomes automatic, and then when it goes in autopilot, uh, it becomes step by step. So yeah. maybe easier to explain. But yeah. I don't know. Um, I'm still a, uh, a bigger fan to like the sketch because I I don't know I, I don't. I remember because you showed me the step by step, meaning the mm -hmm. um, uh, the various pictures of the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I wish we could um, share the screen. Sorry for that. I could try to share the screen, but I I'm so afraid that I will mess up everything. So maybe next time uh, we'll, if for now, uh, we'll. We want to. Uh, I will. I will try to be able to also share a screen so we can show you also a little bit of reference, like he showed me in, uh, in private coaching, and you showed me that step by step, and it was beautiful, and I. I don't know. I. I can um, imagine how that could ever become a step by step, because. I don't know for the placing of the brush strokes. I don't know. Uh, I I can I can imagine that becoming a fixed and mm, mm -hmm. rigid pro process. I don't know. Well, it's it's rigid. Uh, obviously, the figure changes and the volumes change, so you still have to learn how to interpret the, the figure. So. I think some degree of sketch uh, must be present. Maybe, uh, obviously, I I think I I don't know all the painters, professional painters, how they paint, but I guess most of them they will paint in a in a sketch way because if you paint uh, blending and layering and glazing from the beginning. Uh, you have a high risk of something not, not, not working being or not working or not being like you want to be yeah. and and then it's way more work yeah. and it's not you, you don't have time for that so I guess uh, it becomes something uh, normal sketching in when you have to, to go quick yeah maybe you, you get better at sketching but that yeah. doesn't mean that, that you don't do it. It's it's always uh, a little bit there. It's like you, it's like you draw a figure. You, you you can probably draw without the lines of construction, the construction lines, when you are very advanced. But yeah, maybe maybe you, it's also good, and you and the result can actually be better. Uh, if you continue to keep that construction lines on, on your on your drawing, so mm -hmm. I, I think that was the the concept, right? Yeah, in fact, uh, now that you set out the the drawing, it's it's pretty similar. Uh, when I, I'm not that good, I'm not too good at drawing. I I can copy, mm, like I can perfectly copy anything. But when I try to do something in, by my own, I I am absolute zero. I don't know how to do it. And in painting, it's more or less the same. Uh, you can be able to, to copy uh, a non-metallic. You can be able to copy a, a process or a skin tone or whatever. But if you have to do something different, you need to know how to sketch. You need to know... Uh, how to place that 
like a stickman, like a, in drawing, you need to place the the, the construction the anatomy. lines. Yeah, the construction, and the construction is the sketch. Yes. And without that, obviously, when you reach a point where you did it mm, a million times, you will draw without the the construction. The construction line. Yeah. But at the beginning, you need to. Yeah, I think in drawing, maybe uh, I see a lot of uh, professional artists um, that I follow on YouTube, like Jazz Al or another guy um, who does this um, alcohol markers art, which I love. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're both uh, professional artists, but they still do construction lines. And I think it's, it's like sketching. You have to get to know the... The, the pose because the pose the character might might be the same but you, you the pose might be different for shortening and stuff like that so I think for most artists construction line as sketch in uh, on our field it is always there uh, of course uh, it, and there are those cases in which they they don't even use a reference but they are a small percentage like I have this guy in mind who can like draw a, a whole city uh, after from memory from uh, um, by yeah I know what you mean but that's a very specific yeah. one yeah 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 and that's that's like a small percentage of people mm. like peculiar people uh, we have a question here for you not for me uh, you can read it if you if you ha if you can see it. How do I deal with art block? Which is our next topic. What from you make queen Um. Oh, that it happens many times <laughs> a month now. <laughs> it happens too often. Um. I I deal with it by. I'm very stubborn in, in not, not in many things. I'm not stubborn in my life, but in painting, I'm really stubborn. And I, if, if I don't achieve something or I'm, I'm not feeling it or I'm not particularly happy or motivated, I keep trying until I do. And with motivation, uh, when I don't have it, obviously I have to keep working because I have to pay my rent. But I try to... If my motivation is not too low, it's just low, I um, try to look at things... For example, if I do a commission job of a barbarian, and I hate barbarians, I'm tired of barbarians, but I have to do it. And how to overcome that? looking for something in that figure that makes me want to paint it. For example, I hate bar barbarians, but I absolutely love uh, night schemes or fire, uh, like a fire or a cell that gives the main source of light. So I would try to bring the things that I want to paint in a, in a topic that I don't like. If That's the only in the case that my motivation is not too bad. It's, it's okay. But if my motivation is really low and I have a really huge block, art block, that, that it happens as well, uh, I stop and first of all, look at, at my work because it happens to me for for what reasons it happens to you? That, that's something that you have to ask yourself. In, in my case, it happens because I torture myself, uh, because I think I'm not good enough, and that I'm not doing something worth showing or worth even getting paid. So I need to remind myself why I'm, I'm getting paid for that or um, if I'm good or not. And I would do that looking at my own pieces, uh, looking at my progress, uh, studying what I did good in one and what I did wrong, and kind of putting an analytic mindset and try to learn from myself 
from my past self. And if if that doesn't work, I stop completely what I'm doing. Any job I'm doing, any commission, I delay everything. <laughs> And I paint something for myself. Uh, that's the last, um, last strategy, last option. But it happens, and and sometimes uh, you have to just re re refine or find again your hobby and go back to your roots and why you paint. And and that's that always works for me, painting something that I really want to paint. That's a that's a good strategy there, and I think the the one in the middle is it's also a good strategy because I I know from I wanted to discuss this topic because I I wrote I I I, I saw your post at the end uh, of the year or at the beginning of the year I don't I don't remember uh, about this topic about inspiration about motivation and about how we feel about what we do and mm -hmm. to us probably to me and to all the people who are watching and who who know the level you paint at uh we we listen to your words the words that you're saying about yourself and when you're feeling low when you're feeling not motivated uh when you're feeling burned out and and we are like how 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 does he look uh, at his work and, and and say and think that's bad that's not worth the money but i think that's that's normal that's that's just how, uh, what happens uh with people it, like, it happens at any level at any it level, doesn't happen at any yeah. level. it happens to me it happens to uh someone who's just started it happens to other people to the masters to other masters like you uh, it happens to everybody, and I, I, I had that feeling. I am um, most of the time unsatisfied with my work, uh, but yeah, the, the change in mindset and having a, like um, I don't know the words in English, but it's something up in, in psychology, um, but I don't know the word, but something that reminds us, like that is objective, totally objective. Something that reminds us where we stand and where we used to stand. And mm -hmm. the path between those two points. Mm -hmm. And like, it, it's in, in, in Italian, it's ancoraggi. I don't know if it makes sense in Spanish. Yeah. It's like anchor, anchoring, maybe anchoring in English. I don't know. It's positive anchoring. And we have to remind ourselves that Okay, maybe we are not totally happy what about, uh, on what we're doing now, on the result that we achieved, but we did achieve something. Because we have to look at the picture maybe years before and we can see the progress. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's even hard to see the progress because yeah. he, when, when, you're, when we're all... Uh, cooped up in our own, uh, in our own negativity, it because it becomes hard to see reality as it is. So uh, in those cases, uh, positive reinforcements and positive uh, anchorings are uh, even more important. So hmm. having like positive feedback from people who are better than you, uh, positive feedback from uh, clients, mm, all this stuff, just like having like. Uh, um, a drawer, uh, imaginary drawer, in which you have all this uh, positive stuff about your work. And keeping it there and opening it up when you need it. But sometimes we, it doesn't, it's not enough. Sometimes it's not enough, and, but you, you found a good uh, strategy to, to yeah. push through and find, uh, find uh, something that helps you out of that situation. It's okay sometimes to delay a little bit the work because other otherwise uh, the the work is I the work I, itself is gonna suffer if i don't delay it i i wouldn't do it or i wouldn't yeah. do it worse so in fact it's better for everyone if i delay it's it. better for anyone 
I I don't know how how it works yeah. in in like at your level I'm <laughs> doing game level commissions and sometimes some display level uh, but I don't know how it works with box art with the time I I think it it, it depends a lot uh, on the client if it's very like mm, yeah, and it wants well, like ten days if you uh, have a um, very tight deadline and you have to paint it for that deadline for a Kickstarter or for a release or uh, you cannot delay it and these are the hardest times because if you are low on motivation and you have to do it because and because you can't absolutely for no reason delay that work uh, that's just a matter of will of uh, I don't know. Just yeah, do it. Sometimes, sometimes we, we gotta push through uh, anyway, even uh, if we if don't feel like uh, what we produce is uh, is shit. Of course, in your case, it's never shit, but let's pretend it is. <laughs> Shall we? It happens to me all the time with my videos that I always think I, I don't have a uh, high self esteem myself. So. I, uh, well, I think it has um, some part of of reality. I don't think I'm that good, and I think I'm doing things really or wrong sometimes. And I I try to not compare myself to others, but compare myself to you what I want, want to, to be. be. No, so your what, ideal what, self. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that's what makes me push and torture myself mm. as well. Uh, but I think it's what makes me push uh, as well because I think the miniature painting world is in a very early stage. And even our top painters are in this early stage of, of our miniature world. So I think. Mm, miniature painting has a lot to to evolve, and not because some uh, a painting is uh, on the top of the of the wall of the mm, I don't know how to say it, but on the top of the wall or a top class, uh, it's the best it can be. So I think it's um, it's very useful. For someone that that's professional, mostly, to not look at others, but look at what it should or what it could be. Yeah, sure. I think it, it helps you push a, yes. a lot more. It makes you not relax. And sometimes uh, the obsessiveness, uh, it's kind of useful to, even if it's it maybe can be, can be can really take a toll on us, but it's useful to get it done. Um, but I think it's it's also good uh, sometimes to recognize when we the, the the work we are doing it's it's the obsession that we put into a piece it's it's wasted. For example, I did uh, you know the the figure the lady figure the bust uh, like you remember the the, the lady. I I have. You are frozen now for me. No, I'm not. Fr um, am I frozen? Yeah, yeah, I'm frozen. Oh, sorry, I might mean you're frozen. Okay, maybe we are back. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, now we are back. Okay, we are back. People yeah. come back here, please. Now. Yeah, we are back. But uh, I see you frozen now, but in the streaming I can see you well. Okay. <laughs> so okay. I guess I will have to see you <laughs> frozen. <laughs> it's better that way, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, we'll answer some questions. Yeah, uh, well, let's see. You, you're going to answer. <laughs> Uh, Alessandro Gobi says that uh, he sees the sketching process like a low-resolution picture. 
uh, that continuing the process, you can increase the resolution of the picture, and that's exactly how I see it. Uh, it's mostly something that if you keep the figure away from yourself, uh, you would see it like the finished version. And, and that's the, the whole point, to see the figure early. Yes, then, then we have uh, Roberto. Roberto, yeah, about the 10,000 hours. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's 10,000 or I think oh, just 10, practicing uh, and, and having, there's, there's a point when, when painting, and I guess it's when, with any kind of art, when you stop doing what you can and you start doing what you want, uh, is the point where you can, uh, as he says, uh, express yourself and that point becomes uh, real when you don't have that many technical barriers if you know how to manage the brush or the airbrush and you know how to let's say it, you know how to paint and if you know how to paint then from that point you can start doing crazy things and and expressing your ideas in the figures. Uh, if you don't know how to blend, if you don't know how to do a, a something fairly simple, then it's. I think it's pretty necessary to first stop, learn the basics, learn how to interpret a volume uh, correctly, interpret uh, a light. Um, learn about colors a little bit, learn the basics of, of the brush, blending, uh, doing texture, etc. Once you, you don't need to master all this, but when you can manage yourself that, then you can start doing whatever. When you have uh the right amount of knowledge, you can actually be free of doing what, what you want. Yeah, it's. I think it's it's breaking the technique barrier. When yes. you don't have that barrier, that that's the brush. Usually, when your mind and your and your brush go in the same way, um, that's the point where you can start expressing yourself. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. We have so, uh, other questions. Uh, from Pila Princia. Yeah. You can read it. Uh, had I ever grab inspiration on the color palettes from classical painters? Mm, classical painters, not that much. Uh, I did, but I usually uh, grab inspiration from um, fantasy artists, uh, contemporary. I like the one that it's closer to that it's uh, Roberto Ferri uh, he is a great inspiration for skin tones and, and lights but I like a style a bit more colorful and a bit more comic ish so I prefer um, artists that are a bit less academic a bit more colorful Digital art is is usually my main source of inspiration. That's cool. Also, um, it's interesting comic style. I know you talked about this uh, with Mini Matters, yeah. and and that was also very interesting uh, to me because um, I actually, like I said before, I experimented with alcohol markers, and mm -hmm. those uh, color blocks. I think there are. It's, it's an interesting thing to apply to minis. Um, mm -hmm. Simplified, but very effective. And not so simple as it might seem, because you can, you can make it more complex and more interesting. Like, like yeah. for example, you did. It can be done very easily, like with uh, the main shapes, uh, few, just one color for a shade, one color for a highlight. 
but it can become complex and it I think it's it's very interesting how the, the various uh types of arts, mediums of arts come together and they can come together in miniature painting. Even though I think the the most uh the most difficult thing about miniature painting is that um you have a 3D figure. So yeah. it, in in a way it's it's much more messier, much more messy than uh, having just the one point of view that you have on a canvas or on a on a yeah. piece of paper. Uh, that's that's the the main thing because you know on miniatures we have uh, one way of seeing it, but then you you have to paint the back, uh, and you have to paint another source of light. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. That then becomes uh, yeah. Anyway. So we have more. Let's see. Uh, Arash, uh, that's Luis. Hi, Luis, by the way. Uh, long time no see. Um, do you feel that teaching can help you with motivation? I remember when you did a non metallic course in Barcelona two years ago that you were telling us that you hated the figure that you were painting. But then, after a couple of brush strokes, you seem really proud of that. Uh, yeah, that's what I was saying at the beginning that. Uh, the, f the first way to overcome uh, the lack of motivation is to keep to keep going and eventually if if your motivation is not that bad uh, you can find it again that's that was my first um, approach to overcoming the lack of motivation and and yeah the teaching it absolutely helps because seeing and teaching is super rewarding because mm, you can see uh, it, it seems very uh, romantic or poetic but you can see in the eyes of the student how they really mm, understand things and do these clicks and, and enjoy learning mm, because they mm, overcome something that they didn't know how to do or, or whatever and it's really rewarding really and that motivates of course yes yes and I, and I experienced it myself even though I think uh, doing a workshop uh, face to face that that uh, lasts a long time it's different than doing like few hours of uh, online lesson like we did yeah for sure but like I said in the beginning uh, especially in the two la uh, last two ones that we did it wasn't just about uh, learning a process, but just discussing, uh, and uh, I don't know. I I found I found it uh, very enriching, um, and and you are very patient because I, I remember the first lesson that we made, and I can, please can you repeat again because I'm kind of slow like I said before, and but you were very patient and very and very clear in how you explain uh, things, and. So, as I said before, you're not just uh, a good painter, you're also a very good teacher. And I, I look forward to, to attend one of your <laughs> workshops, if we will be ever able to do one yeah, in I person. Hope so. So. <laughs> let's, let's hope so. And uh, yeah, and meanwhile, we'll get to see each other like this. And, and for me, this, uh, this stream was uh, very, very interesting and very enriching because I, I like discussing these kind of topics and, and maybe talking also also talking about something that uh, it isn't so much talk about so burnout motivation isn't really talked about that much yeah uh, I think we need to talk about that more because I think in art is is a problem and and the pressure, uh, the psychological pressure that artists uh, suffer, it, it's a real thing. And we have to give credit that there's a real presence of that. Yeah, I think it goes tight. It, it's, uh, it's something that um, you cannot have a proper um, need to improve without uh, torturing a bit yourself. Because one yes. <laughs> uh, one makes the other. Uh, you 
you don't think you're doing good enough, so you push yourself. And obviously, there's there's levels of uh, sanity. Yes, there is and, a limit. There is a yeah. sane limit, and then there is a kind of dysfunctional, but dysfunctional not from itself, but because it causes you to go, go completely mad and completely obsessed. But I think it's also good that you, sometimes you get obsessed. I, I remember in one of our lessons you, you, you were talking about it, that you were actually obsessed. You, you thought about it uh, while you were in bed, while you were uh, yeah. eating and, and that's okay too. But I don't know, I think we, we need to have boundaries as well. So that's 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 yeah. good to have. My boundaries. wife knows that when I when I get obsessed, slaps I, you in the face. <laughs> I always ask her or or go to the uh, to the studio and just to look at it w one second to to see um, uh, maybe I do that when I'm really invested in a figure. I go to the studio to see the figure while I'm not painting uh, five six times a day. Just, just go, grab it, look at it, and and go back. Just to, I don't know, it's it's the obsession. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we have to find the healthy boundaries with uh, with that because uh, one one side we it, it pushes us and from one side can be really really bad for us. Uh, us, I mean, I mean you, not us. Well. No. <laughs> well, I think we have uh, another question from Francesco. Uh, Maybe the last one, uh, the last two ones, because the other one is uh, is the it's one of my favorite uh, Italian painters. Mm -hmm. uh, is the guy that won the Beyond contest that did yeah. the, the amazing boast. Hello. Yeah, it's standing. Um. I've not so great skill, but in theory, years uh, of pain should have given me a methodical approach, at least for the standard pain. But it's not the case. Maybe I'm getting old. Any suggestions? Um, I don't. I don't think a method is necessary. Uh, I think you need to know what you're doing. Sort of. I mean, I you I sometimes don't know absolutely what I'm doing, but if you know your ways with a brush, uh, you can do a mess and and correct it. And I think that's the point. Look, um, search for it while painting, and not so uh, having. And that's what we are talking about uh, in the previous topic with uh, step by step. Uh, a method becomes a method because you did it many times. But when you keep exploring and you keep advancing, you are in a constant, I don't know what the fuck I'm, going, I'm doing. And that's good. That's, uh, that, that means that you are in, a, in, the, in the edge of what you know. And you are advancing. If you feel comfortable, then... Uh, you're failing. Well, not failing, but you are not improving as much as you could. <laughs> so not being comfortable, good thing. Yeah, not not yeah, um, absolutely. Next one. Uh, next one. You may. Uh, what texture is more fun to paint? Metal, wood, fabric. Uh, absolutely, and I think everyone will agree. Uh, Non-metallic <laughs> is the most fun. I, I must say that I I prefer a little bit to paint skin, but non-metallic is the second uh, close to, to skin. Uh, just because it allows to do so many different kinds of, of textures in the same um, in the same material, you can do a non-metallic polished, not polished, uh, bright, no bright. Um, you can, in in the same figure, you can do many types of of non-metallic, and and keep it different, and that's 
that's the the most interesting for me in metals. I agree. Uh, Shadow of Colors, talking about early stages of miniature painting. Is there anything you'd like to paint to do paint next and you didn't figure out how to do it yet? Yes, I'm painting uh, now in my spare time uh, one of my marble figures, the Daredevil, and I'm painting it with full frontal shadow. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's difficult because shadows usually are, are ugly, are not ugly, but are not as pretty as, as lights or not as easy to, to make pretty as lights. So what usually in, in Daredevil comics, he is uh, pure black because he's always at night and he has this red rebound light or, or rim light that makes you understand that he is red but he is in fact full of shadow with black and i'm trying to to put that in the figure it's not easy but i'm i I'm, i think i'm achieving something with two extremes with i'm using this uh the purest black the 3.0 blackest black of the universe uh which is not that black it's just a matte black but but it's dark I agree. And then I'm using fluo, fluo inks uh, to do the lights. So it's th there's a great contrast. And I think I'm I'm achieving something, but we will see <laughs> if I if I finish that. I want to see that so badly now. I'm so curious about that. Uh, we have a well, last one. My wife. <laughs> That's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how do you keep your bear so nice? I, I trim it today, so it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a nice beard. And yeah, my hair is beautiful because she she buys myself uh, my air um, products. So yeah, shampoos and. <laughs> she's she's the most amazing wife. Let yeah. let just she, say it. Yeah. Let's just say it. <laughs> okay. It was a nice chat. I, I don't think there. Uh, should we wait if, to see if there are any more questions? Well, if someone has a question, it's the time. <laughs> now is the time. Awkward silence for <laughs> one minute, staring each other in the face. Yeah, I, I, I now you are moving, so just uh, closing the window and opening, <laughs> I can see you. Okay. I'm so not fixed anymore. I'm not staring at a frozen version of you. <laughs> that was kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah. I bet. We have another one. If you can choose one of your painted figures to paint it again, which one will you choose? And what would you change? From Ah, your, is it dry? No, that's not. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I, it's a good question. Uh, I usually don't like to paint twice the same figure. In fact, I, I don't accept commissions of the same figure twice. Mm, but in my, I, I don't, I don't regret any figure uh, now that I that I think of but I have one the closer to this answer would be that I have now uh, one of the figures of the Kickstarter that we are preparing by the way we are preparing a Kickstarter uh, with beyond miniatures or yeah 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 oh I didn't know that yeah it's and one of those figures that I'm currently painting, I have an idea that it involves two versions of the, of the same uh, figure, the same bust. So it's not that I regret the first version, but uh, this idea I have for this, for this character is made with 
two versions of the same. I, I don't know if I explain myself. It's hard to follow. I, I, I see for your face. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you can judge it from my face. Um, I am slow, you know. <laughs> but it, it's an idea that involves two versions of the same figure. But you, it's it's a Kickstarter. We, we didn't actually see that, uh, like, whips of this figure. No, no. So it's top secret. Yeah, it's top secret. Okay. So maybe it's, it's hard for me to follow because I, I don't have the figure in mind. Well, it's a it's a it's a bust of a mm. beautiful demon girl. Okay. And that uh, that bust will have one version that it's the well, time painting right now. And if I have the time, which I hope, uh, I like to do another version of the same bust in another different way, but presenting both uh, together they complete the idea that I want to to translate with that painting. So it's it's another experiment. It's a two in one painting, I guess. That's cool. Um, I'm I'm eager to see that. No. Yeah, I hope I have to change either the time to, to make it. Uh, what else? Both of you like metal band frontmen. If you really were, what genre would you choose? Both of uh, you like me and you. <laughs> it's more. Well, I'm kind of stuck in my in my musical taste mm -hmm. since I don't know 15 years ago, <laughs> and and I kind of I, I I don't progress. I'm closed in Metal Symphonic and I cannot go out from that. I don't know. It's something that it has me. Well, like what, what groups? Uh, well, my favorite was the lane which just uh, disbanded, so oh. I'm a bit heartbroken. No. But uh, I also like Apocalyptica a lot, okay. uh, Epica. I like as well Evanescence has some. Oh, I saw them live uh, yeah. like three years ago. Uh, is I, that the, gen the genre of music? Well, they are more gothic, I think. Gothic. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I love them. I used to listen to them when I was uh, uh, a kid, but uh, I still love them. And I actually saw them live, I think, in 2018, maybe. They come to Milan, and she's amazing. She, I love her. <laughs> she's amazing. Yeah. Um, other groups? Uh, the second, well, my favorite is Delaine, and my second close one uh, to that is, is Apocalyptica. I think the most beautiful song of all times is Nothing Else Matter, but the Apocalyptica, Apocalyptica version. Mm. Uh, it's something that it I don't know. It's it's special. I never uh, listened to to the the cover of a of Apocalypse of, of this song, but I, I do know Meta Metallica. I never liked uh, songs without uh, lyrics, but they changed my my point of view because that that song when you really listen to it, it's really really something. Like maybe uh, Voice of the Soul. From death, you don't you don't know that. No. It's a melodic uh, song from death, I think. Uh -huh. It's called the group. I don't remember right now, but it's a it's a very uh, unique song. So uh, in like there there are few guitars, and I actually back in the days I used to play. I, I'm still playing guitar, but um, I'm acoustic guitar and. Like sometimes I also I also sing Taylor Swift, so <laughs> <laughs> my musical genres and my musical taste is uh, are very nice. So don't judge me on that. But yeah, uh, back in the days I was pretty adept at uh, playing guitar, and I and I did this uh, cover of Voices of the Soul, and it's it's pretty hard to play. So maybe I, I will link I will link you the song, and you can tell me what you. <laughs> 
which, which it doesn't make you feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I imagined you more like a total Slayer guy or a Metallica <laughs> guy. <laughs> No, 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 I'm pretty chill. I, <laughs> if, I, if I go to a concert and, well, my wife is more a concert person than, than me, uh, I would prefer a thousand times to be in a chair uh, like, <laughs> with my drink and my, <laughs> than, than in a crazy spot like in Ramstein. Uh, last year, last year was in 2019, no, in 2019, that we went to see Ramstein and it was my first really in the middle of the stuff. The crowd, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back in the days when I was like uh, a teenager, I, I did all my concert like in the in the crowd. Um, and sometimes they actually did the, the circle with the with people all pushing each other. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of scary because I was just like this kid and there was this there was this, there were these big guys in hair and beards yeah, 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 yeah. throwing <laughs> their self around um, so it was kind of, it's kind of scary I, I, I remember one time uh, I saw Cannibal Corpse which is a pretty uh, I, like, it's, it's, I think it's like death metal no it's I don't know what genre is it but uh, yeah it was pretty extreme uh, people pushing each other yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm too old for that now. <laughs> I want to see it down too. <laughs> the last concert I, I took, uh, took part in, I was uh, sit down. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I would prefer that. <laughs> uh, we are too old for that. Come on. <laughs> mm, yeah, I'm getting old, yeah. I, 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 I would probably break something. <laughs> uh, do we have any other questions? Mm. Uh, how do you do to choose a color palette and how do you make it so you don't end up with similar ones? Your figures have a great variety of palettes. Um, I, well, I think my palettes are pretty much similar. I think, I guess it's something as, as well as the style that I don't see. Uh, but I try to pick, you know how um, comic characters or, or for example, um, like Simpsons or um, Family Guy or any show that, like this or South Park with two or three colors, you know which character it is. Just and, and I saw that many years ago, uh, a website that had just all the characters made with four um, squares of color. And you could absolutely say every character which one was. No, no shapes, nothing, just four squares of color. And, and that's what I try to do with my, with my figures, to pick uh, three or four colors that make the the most important uh, volume of the figure, and then um, this would be the 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 pattern of the of the figure. I think in the image that that we have here in the in the background, uh, you can see it in uh, just below me, which is. The, the the lady with the blue OSL and the gun. This this is just two colors that really make the impact. Is the flesh tone that it's a pink one and the blue, and it, that's a, a pretty simple combination of two colors. In the in the just next to it. It's the the mage. There's a, a mage with a white beard, and that's the same. That has the blue beard, a slightly purplish uh, face, and and the completely blue side. And that's because the the um, cloth 
it's neutral, so it doesn't affect the the impact of the figure. And this happens with, I would say, 95% of my figures because I try to stick to three or four uh, tops uh, colors that make the first impression. And and these colors are the the main direction of the figure. I don't know if I'm explaining myself. I got it. So I think you you explained it very okay. well. <laughs> if I got it, don't worry. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Uh, it's like you're focusing your palette in few things and then keeping the other stuff like more. Neutral, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Understood. <laughs> so we have a few questions more. Call up a lot. Mark Planas. <laughs> It's uh, another student. <laughs> Hi, mate. Uh, Alessandro Gobi, do you like more extreme bands, but symphonic? Dimu Bolgir? No, I never listened to that. I would, I would try. I'm, I'm pretty um, lost now that my favorite brand is disbanded. So I accept any kind of suggestion. <laughs> new suggestions about bands and stuff. But you can also uh, always listen to the the old stuff. Yeah. I always do, but I I keep listening to all the stuff for 15 years, so I think sometimes <laughs> some we would like something new. <laughs> How was the group called? I don't remember. The Lane. I, I, I say that again. The Lane. The Lane. Okay. Yeah. I'll look it up. And I will send you the Voice of the Soul song. <laughs> I think we're done with the questions. Yeah, I think so. Last chance. But I think we're done. It's, it's, a, it's been quite more time than I thought it would. But I think it went pretty well. Mm, it was a fun time. We, we, we might do a part two if you're up to it. Maybe <laughs> when I will understand how to share my screen, uh, your, your screen how to mm. make people see your screen. And yeah, thank you for, for being here. And it was, uh, I think it was a very enriching experience for, for all of us, including me. And I guess we'll see you next time. Yeah, uh, thank you for having me, uh, of course. And it's always a great pleasure to see some, someone that is interested, interested in hearing me talk about my way of seeing painting and uh, well thank you and of course you know that every time that you want to do something like that I'm, I'm in thank you thank you for I, I really appreciate your your attitude uh, sometimes it is not easy to d discuss some topics or just to put ourselves out there Um, share what, what we know our experiences with with painting so uh, I, I feel I feel lucky to have, have met you to have you here and to have my uh, the people are following us uh, had the, the, the pleasure to to listen to you yeah th thank you guys for the questions it were uh, very very interesting questions in fact. Yeah. And sorry for the the freeze. Uh, I don't know what happened there, uh, <laughs> but I know how to fix it uh, at least more quickly next time. So I guess we say goodbye now, and mm -hmm. thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>